Hi, my name is Neil. Welcome to my channel. So this is the beginning of a brand new series where we discuss different ideas, terminologies, concepts regarding motorsports and particularly simulation racing, aptly named The More You Know. So in this first episode, I'm going to address the elephant in the room right away. As you know, this channel is just a few days old. And in the last few days, I realized that many of you are actually quite new when it comes to the world of simulation racing and motorsports in general, and therefore finding it quite difficult following what I'm saying during my hot lapping and breakdown session in my other series, How to Hot Lap. So today we are going to look at a few terms regarding racing and race tracks, and I'm going to explain them in as simple language as I possibly can. At least I'm going to try. Starting it off with a simple one, the starting line. So the starting line or the start line as the name suggests is just a line on the race track where the race starts and subsequently finishes which is also why it's sometimes referred to as the start finish line. The starting line also serves another purpose that is to mark the beginning and end of each lap for each car during a race. Now a car or bike race does not start like an olympic sprint race where you line up all the competitors one beside the other at the starting line and let them go all at once. <laughs> you can't do that with 10, 15, 20 cars. So all the cars are lined up behind the starting line in an order and then shown the green signal. Which is also why you'll find the starting line placed halfway on a straight piece of the track. So that all the cars, even the last car waiting to start the race, can have a good start and accelerate right away as hard as possible. Talking about main straight, well each track can be broken down into two primary components, the corners or turns and the straights. The straight sits between two consecutive corners where the cars accelerate as hard as possible. The main straight is just the longest piece of straight along which a car can accelerate hard without letting go. You'll often find the starting line across the main straight. Now let's come to corners and the four stages of taking a corner, namely breaking point, entry, apex and exit. Breaking point is just the point where you need to start braking to reach the corner at an optimum speed. It's unique for each car and each corner. You don't want to brake before the braking point or you will reach the corner too slow and you will make the corner but you will lose time. You don't want to brake after the braking point either or you will not make the corner at all and run out of the track limits or you will need to carry your brakes into the corner too much thus slowing your car down way too much and losing time. Entry is where you start turning your steering wheel into the corner towards the apex. Apex is where you come closest towards the inner side of the curvature of the corner and exit is where you gradually straighten out your steering wheel and accelerate out of the corner. Now let's come to curbs and sausage curbs. Curbs are just a concrete edging around the asphalt of the track so where the asphalt ends these edgings begin. Uh, they are mostly found at and around the corners in the inner portion of the corner at the apex and the outer edges at the entry and exit area. These are the regions where the car is most likely to go out of the track. So these curbs are often patterned on colors and textures. So when the car is driven on these curbs, it gives the driver an idea that you need to get back onto the track or the asphalt. Sausage curbs are tiny raised or bumped portion of the curb at the apex. Like a bump on public roads, they are meant to slow you down if you reach a corner too fast and prevent you from running off the track at the exit. Markers These are tiny boards placed along the edge of the track on the entry and braking zones and they are meant to give the driver an idea of how far he is from the track. In some tracks they are just marked as 1, 2, 3. In other tracks they literally show you the distance you are from the corner, so 50, 100 and 150. They help the driver get an idea of the braking point and turning point for the corner. Banking. Let's all recall a bit of 10th grade physics lessons here. So banking is where the asphalt is sloped towards the curvature of a corner to allow the car carry more speed through the corner without crashing. In some tracks like the Laguna Seca and the famous carousel in the Nordschleife, only a portion of the track is banked towards the corner and the other half of the track is flat. In other tracks like the Monza and the Nardo Ring in Italy and basically all the NASCAR tracks in the United States, the entire asphalt is banked in towards the corner to allow for some exciting overtaking and competitive racing. Racing line is another term you'll often hear. It's just a trajectory a car follows around a track. It's critical, especially during the corners. Drivers use different racing lines depending on how much speed they want to carry 
during the entry and exit of the corners, a tight racing line is one that's close to the inner curvature of the corner and the wider line is one that's far off from the curvature. Ideally, a tight line is the faster way to go around the corner. However, racing drivers often use a wider line during rain when the track is wet because the inner line deposits rubber from the tires of the cars and cars driving on them during a dry session. And when that rubber becomes wet during a rain, it provides less grip. So a driver taking a wider line around a wet corner is driving on bare asphalt and is thus getting more grip. Track limit is just the portion of the track you are allowed to drive on without getting disqualified. As simple as that. On the straights, there are usually white lines running along the outer edge of the asphalt and sometimes some tracks include the curbs in the corners as well within the track limits. If all four tires go outside the track limit, that lap is disqualified or if a race is going on, the driver usually serves a penalty before he can rejoin the race. So as long as just one tire is within the track limits, you're good to go. Runoff area is the region between the track limit and the barrier. In modern tracks, the runoff area, particularly around the corner, is usually made of concrete. However, in older tracks, they are often made of grass or gravel. They allow the driver to safely slow down and get back on the track if they run off the track for any reason. Barriers are just walls that mark the boundary of a track area. So during a race, everyone outside of the car, that's team crew, race crew, first responders, even audiences, everyone is meant to be on the other side of the barrier. These are often lined with absorbent materials like welded tires or specially designed absorbers so that if a car crashes into them, it somewhat absorbs the impact and is thus a critical safety feature of any track. So then, what is hot lapping? Now I know, I know, I do have a video live on my channel that's literally named what is hot laps. That video is about this channel named hot laps and the genesis of it. Now what does hot lap literally mean? Well, there are three types of laps. Warm-up lap, where a driver drives around a track, not necessarily attacking a particular time, but warming up his tires, his brakes and the engine, all the mechanical components, bringing them up to optimum operating temperature. Hot lapping is where the driver is driving the car around the track as hard as possible following the racing line and trying to complete the lap in as short a lap time as possible. Then comes cool down lap, where the car is just driven around putting minimum pressure on the mechanical components, just allowing fresh air to pass on them, thus cooling them down. Last but not the least, breakdown. So breakdown can be imagined as just plain and simple analysis. Looking at the recording of a lap, drivers and teams can collect different data regarding braking points, turn-in points, what speed to carry into and out of corners, what speed the car is doing at the end of each straight, and a lot more allowing the driver and the teams to understand and work on ways to make the car go around the track even faster. So that's about it for today. Uh, if you have any other questions or ideas you'd want to know about, ping them down in the comment box below and I'll try to cover them in the next episode of The More You Know. No, I literally need to say it like this. It's a law. While you're down there, hit your favorite buttons, the like, share, subscribe and the bell notification icon and I'll see you in my next video. Until then, drive hard, drive safe. Take care.